Hi, this is Patrick with Main Street, and this is some rear hydraulic brake maintenance. On your hydraulic brakes, you should have a nice firm feel at the lever. To check your fluid level, you'll look here. It has a minimum line. If it gets below that, it may be of concern. It is normal that as pads wear, the pads are going to push in closer to the brake rotor. That area in the brake caliper has to fill up with fluid, which comes out of here. So as the pads wear, it's normal for the fluid to go lower. Although if there's any issue, if this gasket is bad and it starts to absorb water and the fluid looks very dark and dirty, it can actually start to get to feel a little spongy. It can work air into the system with the water. And at that point, it becomes more corrosive and an issue that that fluid should be replaced. We'll remove some fluid from the reservoir. Just like it says on the syringe, discard after use. Reasons to remove this fluid would be to replace one of the components, such as the master cylinder lever or the caliper. It will need to be refilled after that, or if the fluid is contaminated and dirty. From our parts site, we'll, we'll sell the bleed kit. Comes with some dot five fluid and a syringe. You will need your own quarter inch line wrench. Definitely recommend a line wrench on the, uh, the, the bleed screw fittings. Although, in a pinch, if you're careful, you could probably make a regular open end wrench work. If replacement of the master cylinder or the rear caliper is needed, definitely recommend replacing the, the fluid that's in the system at the same time. If that needs replaced, um, go ahead and try to drain out as much as you can. and that will take some time. So after it stops dripping, and it's pretty empty of fluid, you can go ahead and close these off. Wipe up a little bit. Dot five fluid is not as corrosive as the earlier dot three stuff, but you still wanna clean it off. To replace this, the main bolts through that mount the caliper to the frame no big deal. Those are 916 uh, heads. The line it uses a banjo bolt. This is a four millimeter Allen. And important when reinstalling, you will want to replace these copper washers on either side of the banjo fitting. One will go between the bolt and the fitting, and it gets a copper washer on that side that screws in. So once you have a new caliper in place, you can get your new copper washers that will give a nice seal. You put one on the banjo bolt. I'll slide that through the banjo fitting. Make sure there's a copper washer on the other side that will seat against the fitting on the caliper. Righty tighty. On tightening these up, um, really a similar torque spec in the seven Newton meter range of, you know, like a seat clamp. You know, where you want it snug, you put a little force, but you're not getting crazy with it. It is about right for either the banjo bolt or these. Something else to say though is if it's brand new parts and you're just they're just going together, I do kind of recommend going a little snug with it, back it off again, make sure it's seated, and then go that go that snug again. You know, kind of the same thing with the bleed screws. The the reason for this is really the seal between the bleed screw and its fitting or with these copper washers, I mean, it is the metal 
um, being malleable and getting crushed and deformed a little bit to fit with the other piece of metal so that no fluid can get by. So that's why it's good to get it, get it tight and make sure that everything is seated and you should be good. In the case that you're replacing the master cylinder, you would need to remove your grip and shifter, have that out of the way, and then undo this line. This side is an eight millimeter, and this fitting is a 10 millimeter. Definitely recommend a line wrench on these so that it can get a good bite and not strip out fittings. So once you have the new master cylinder in place, make sure your line fitting, this adapter is installed and snug. Recommend using a new brake olive. That's this little collar that will slide onto your brake hose. The old one may need to be cut off once they get crushed into place. They're, uh, they're kind of clamped into the hose material. I'm not cutting this off right now. Then you slide it in there. Make sure you're, you thread in by hand first, you know, that the threads are started. And then definitely with a new olive, it's usually not an issue, but you just want to make sure that the hose stays seated all the way in, you know, so it's in that olive fitting. And then you'll take this down tight with the eight millimeter side. And this is something similar to the fittings on the brake caliper. It needs to be snug. It, ne it does need to crush the brass material of that olive just a little bit in order to get a good seal. So then once you have good components in place and you're ready to refill and bleed the system, we will fill a syringe with some fluid. So once you have a syringe full of fluid, give it a little bit to let any air bubbles you see settle to the top. I'm gonna to fill this with uh, fluid and no air. We'll crack, crack open the bleed screw, the quarter inch wrench, and put your hose over the end of this. And with that held in place, you can start to slowly push fluid into the system. It is somewhat normal to see fluid drip from here. It's gonna be coming out around the threads when they're broke loose. And so the point here is that we're pushing fluid in to fill the system from the bottom to the top. And hopefully any air in the system is just gonna come right out the top. This part will be easier with a partner that can watch the reservoir for you because really once fluid gets up and is filling into the reservoir, then the system is full and you can stop here and close this bleeder screw. Or you can lean out and take periodic checks, trying to look around the pedicab or pedal truck. Once you have the reservoir, some fluid coming up into it, you can go ahead and close this bleeder screw. And then since you were just putting pressure on this, Go ahead and give a little back pull and create a little vacuum before you pull your line off so that it doesn't splatter in your face. Then we'll go up and top off the reservoir. Go ahead and bring the, the level up to the top line in the reservoir. And then carefully, so you don't shake the bars too much, give a few squeezes of the lever if it's a fresh system and you've just pushed through, often you'll see a few big bubbles rise. So once you see uh, no more bubbles or just very few rising, it's okay to go ahead and pump until you have pressure and set your parking brake. Okay, so once we've put fluid in the reservoir, you've pulled uh, the parking brake set with, with, with pressure. So we have pressure now. Now we're gonna, um, Crack this open and make sure only fluid comes out and no air. Then I would go back up front, 
set the brake again, and crack open this side. So ideally what you want will be just nice clear fluid coming out with no bubbles, foaminess coming out from it. It may take a couple times, usually just once, once each after a, a fill with the syringe is plenty good to make sure there's no air. So once you're done with that and it's good, we're going to replace the cap. And in summary, you want a system full of fluid with no air, nice clean fluid, and a nice firm lever there, and you should be ready to write.